Right, well, so I wanted to run through the, um, the process of um, actually setting up um, a thing called Captive Portal, which is a feature of Untangle. Um, now, Untangle being, um, being what it is, is actually ideally suited for, for Wi-Fi and providing public access Wi-Fi. So, say you've got your Untangle box set up and you maybe you've got some web filtering going on and perhaps some protocol control because you're obviously those that are accessing your Wi-Fi, you don't want them to be using peer-to-peer -peer and perhaps you're raping your connection. Um, but at the same time, perhaps you want them to agree some, to some terms of service, or perhaps you want them to log in before they go anywhere. So that's where Captive Portal comes in. Now we'll run through a few steps on how to actually enable this, blah, blah, blah. But So before we go anywhere, let's try and actually turn this on. And what it will ping back with a message saying you must create and enable at least one capture rule before turning on the Captive Portal. So that's fine. So what we then need to, uh, what we actually need to do to actually enable that is we need to go and do the actual Captive Portal um, admin page, going to capture captive hosts even, and we're going to enable and capture pretty much the default here, which is that there. We can actually have a look at that as well, seeing what the interface is like. So here we can actually do funky stuff like scheduling, um, so perhaps you only want people to be able to access Wi-Fi from uh, Monday to Friday 9 to 5, and you can also actually do um, the interface they're accessing, so if you've got stuff like um, maybe DMZ, blah blah blah, you can you can do that as well. Um, so, which is, so perhaps like something like a server that's on your DMZ doesn't actually need to be um, doesn't actually need to be authenticated. So that's fine. You can just actually um, set that as um, set that on uh, as it is, pretty much. So um, only those that are going to be on the internal. So I've got two NICs in at the moment. One of them is doing internal. One of them is doing DMZ. I've actually got three NICs. One is the external, which has gone to go into the rest of the network. An internal one, which all my clients will connect to, and the DMZ, which currently has nothing connected into it. But so maybe you're on Wi-Fi is actually going to be on um, on a separate um, on a separate um, NIC, and if it's going to be on a separate NIC, then only you need to only capture those, and then perhaps like your tills are on something else. So maybe your Untangle is actually serving more than just a Wi-Fi. For the moment, though, what we're doing is going to do is use Untangle as our Wi-Fi um, solution. So we can set that as internal, leave that, and ignore that. We also set it as like clients as well. So. We define client IPs and servers and things like this as well. So I'm going to hit done on that, um, and we're going to hit OK, um, and we're going to refresh this page see what's going on with that. So captive captive portal. What we're going to do is we're going to turn that on. We're going to wait a few seconds because it will it will uh, ping back a few servers at server errors if we actually just try and refresh that now, like that one there. So that's actually ping back some server errors. So we can actually refresh that, and it's comes up with this as well which can be a pain in the ass and that's happened a few times all we then really, really need to do is re-enter the IP and then it pings us back to this page so that's actually enabled now so that's good so if we go into settings for that and go under uh, captive page this is the page that we're gonna we can actually customize now you've got three options here it's basic message basic login and custom um, now the basic message is just this uh, I've filled in a few BS um, terms at the moment like by clicking below you agree to not be a pedo and not download, to download tons of stuff on, our, on this free connection and hack our systems blah 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 and Mr T will come over to your house and beat the living what's it out of you, um, if you if you violate any of these so that, that's fine we can, all, we can sort of define all these um, but unfortunately it looks a bit nasty it looks a bit like this it's awful and horrid and this doesn't look right and the untangled things here and it just looks just doesn't look great um, for the moment we are going to just use this but we can do actually is it create custom um, custom stuff um, what you will need to do for this is actually um, download a few things from the captive uh, from the untangled page um, and you need to be proficient in PHP and JavaScript and there's three folds you'll actually need to do that and then you need to zip them together and actually upload them that's sort of how it works it's a bit complicated but uh, I'll have a link to the page so you can actually do that and then you can see what I'm talking about but all of these are actually HTTP um, enabled so we can actually put some HTTP in here to do stuff like, uh, like forward slash p for new paragraph and, and some title and some HTML action blah 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 so we can all actually do that in uh, within Untangle and all of these boxes you can actually do that which is quite handy um, but yeah, for the moment it's just going to look like this, which looks a bit nasty. And there's a bit down here which is a session redirect. So what we can do actually is we can do like custom redirect. So for maybe let's do like um, we can do some uh, Google action just as a BS, um, just as a BS redirect page. So let's hit apply on that just to give that apply and save our settings. Blah blah blah. Then there's these two down here which really don't need to worry about too much. Um, the first one is um, redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS captive page. So if you've got basic logon enabled, you probably want that to be in a secure page. So that basically may means that the captive page is going to be a HTTPS, so a secure page for your users to log in, which obviously is what we want because we don't want people hacking into our systems trying to bypass that. 
And the other one, um, if it's unchecked, it basically blocks all HTTPS traffic for unauthenticated users. And if it's checked, HTTPS traffic is redirected to the captive portal. And that's pretty much all, all it does. Um, so we're just going to leave that as it is for the moment. Um, and, you know, we're just going to go from there. So let's get rid of you a minute. Um, and what we're going to then do is we're going to go into um, the main page and that, just make sure that's enabled. So that's actually enabled at the moment. So what we're going to try and do is, because this, uh, this computer is actually connected to um, to, the, to that network. So we're just trying to access google.co.uk there. And it's pinged back with this page. So we need to actually agree to these terms of service. And this is what your clients will see. So we hit, we have a tick box there which we can hit and press continue. And then it's just going to redirect us back to, um, back to Google. Because that, that's our redirect page. Um, and then what we can do then is if we go into settings here, what we can actually see is actually the clients themselves. So we can see the IP the, the client has got, the username, but in our case that doesn't that doesn't apply because we haven't got user authentication enabled as of yet. Um, the last session, the current session, and the expiration, and the expiration we'll look at uh, in a minute. Um, we can also do stuff like logging out. So if you've got like a really rowdy customer or something like that, or like someone's been on there for ages, or you know maybe you know the IP address of someone's doing something weird, you can just log them out. And then that'll they'll have to re-authenticate. Um, that's basically that, really. So I hit apply on that. I don't for no, no apparent reason, really. Um, and what we can also do well, now that's actually enabled, we can also do stuff like session settings. So um, you can set idle timeouts. So the time between idle connections. If you've got someone that's idle on your network, you don't necessarily want them to be raping the cache in your untangled server. You can set that up. I'll just set that at zero for the moment. Um, uh, by default, this timeout is actually set as 60, uh, so that's an hour, and so every hour your user will have to re-authenticate, but that's a pain in the backside, so I've just set that to 1440, which I think is a day, actually, at the moment, um, and that's that. We also want to allow concurrent login, so actually multiple people can um, multiple people can use the same username and password, which um, which we could actually disable that because really you only I mean maybe if like if your employees perhaps have like a, a smartphone and an iPad they might have one two things connected and that's pretty much captive portal to be honest there's not really much else to define um, apart from perhaps user authentication we'll actually have a look at if you want to do anything funky with user authentication so you might maybe want only your employees to be able to access it and your employees have to have an extra directory account to be able to use it you will need a directory connector which does cost some money, so you will have to lay down some uh, some dollar bills for that. Um, but you can do your own local directory, which is a bit crap. Um, you can actually configure that as well if you wanted to, and do you know blah blah blah. Um, but I mean, for us, if we're going to provide this as a free Wi-Fi, um, maybe free Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or a restaurant or something like that, or a bar, you know, maybe we want to provide some free access Wi-Fi. We don't need to worry about this necessarily. Um, and that pretty much is that account of portal. There's not really much more to go on about it. I will try and do some more videos about stuff like protocol control and web filtering as well. But apart from that, um, that's it, and happy computing.